everybody, thanks for joining me on my first live shop tour. I thought this would be a lot of fun to do. I've done a couple of shop tours in the past. In fact, it was one of my earliest videos was a shop tour. So I thought I would kind of revisit that. I find shop tours interesting. It's kind of fun to look into other people's shops and just to see how they organize things and how things are put together, um, the different tools they use, that sort of thing. Uh, I'm going to be answering questions from patrons over on Patreon. And of course, any of you do a uh, super chat, I'll, I'll try to get to your questions too. Uh, first of all, and I, I actually wrote down some notes along with your questions because I knew there would be some questions that would probably come up automatically. So I, I'll hit those first of all. I know a lot of you are going to want to know the size of my shop. It's a 18 foot by 20 foot shop. That's 360 square feet. And for those of you on metric, that's five and a half meters by six meters wide, which is about 33 square meters. So it's not a huge shop. It's uh, it's probably a small two car garage. This house was built in 1950. And so I don't know if the garages were smaller back then, but it seems kind of smaller, but it's Perfectly big for a shop. We moved into this place in 2001 and I don't think we've ever parked any cars in this garage. So it's always been a shop. When I, we first moved here, I uh, set up all of my tools that I had at that time because we just moved from an apartment and all I had was just some small handheld power tools. And then I think the first thing I built was probably a workbench. I think if you're setting up a shop, that's what you got to start with is a workbench. And if you have a small space, start with a small workbench. My biggest mistake was I made a huge workbench, which I found out over time that I didn't really need that much space on a workbench. Uh, let's see more questions that I'm anticipating I will get. Oh, I just got a super chat in from, I remember I brought my glasses so I can read these things. Uh, from Lucas, he wants to know uh, how I manage dust. Miter dust drives him crazy. He's never found a good solution. Uh, as far as dust extraction, all I use is my shop vac and I hook it up to individual tools. I hook it up to my router and my router table and I hook it into my table saw and my bandsaw actually has a dust port on it and actually my disc sander does too so I guess I kind of hook it up to just various tools and that takes care of most of the dust extraction other things like sanding that I know even with a vacuum hooked up to it are going to create a lot of dust I use I always have a dust mask on and actually I'm wearing a dust mask more and more in this shop because I I don't know, I just get more and more worried about fine particles of dust. But the best way to handle dust would be to get a dedicated dust extractor and have it running, have the ducts running to every stationary power tool you have. And I move my tools around too much, so it's not really the best solution for me. Um, anyways, I want to get back to a couple of the questions that I know are going to come up that I, I anticipated. Uh, first of all, Another question that I get asked a lot in general are tool recommendations. What kind of tool do you, what, what kind of table saw do I recommend? What do you recommend is a good bandsaw? And I'm not a tool guy. I really don't know much about tools because I don't buy a lot of tools. I do a quick little research when I need to buy a tool and then I just kind of buy one and I start using it. And all of the tools I've ha I have in my shop are pretty old and when they just finally give out then I just go and get another tool so I don't really have a lot of recommendations on tools and I don't buy a lot of tools I just I don't know just I just use the tools and so I'm I don't know a lot about it um, and finally the uh, my other recommendation and I, I shouldn't call it a recommendation it's just what I do is I believe in not buying tools unless you really need tools. Um, there's a lot of guys who like to collect tools and that's 
perfectly fine too. I know especially hand tool users like to collect them and display their tools. But to me, my goal is to pare down my tools to just the essential tools that I actually need. And it helps me a lot to just keep things organized. If I, I don't, if I find I'm not using a tool, I get rid of it. Okay, so those were the questions that I knew people were going to ask. And I'll get to the Patreon questions here in a minute. And I'll get to any of the, uh, any more of the super chat questions that come in. I'll get to those after I do the tour. So let me take the camera off of here and let's go for a walk around the shop. I'm gonna flip this over to front facing view. Okay, so let me start out here. Of course, you guys have all seen this outdoor area before, but I'll show it to you again. Okay, so here's my shop from the outside. This workbench here was actually a project that I built a few years ago, and I leave this workbench out here all the time. I really like having that outdoor workbench for finishing and painting projects, and you can see that it's about due for a new top on there this is made out of plywood and all of the plywood i don't know if you can see that in that direction all of the plywood is just splitting just from being in the weather and the rain and everything but that's really handy to have i keep my bandsaw right next to the garage door so when the door comes down it'll stop right about here and i think that's a good space for it i think it's easy to forget that if you're setting up a dedicated shop to kind of think of where the garage door is as usable space, like think of it as another wall that you can kind of set things against. And for a bandsaw, this is a great location because any longer boards that I'm running through there can just extend right out into the driveway. Uh, let's see. This is my dust collection unit that uh, Lucas was asking about and I, of course I built this uh, probably a year ago it's just a shop vac with one of these cyclone units and it just rolls around I leave it plugged in all the time uh, I have this sliding cabinet I really like this cabinet over here a lot and it, there's no back to it, so it just sets up against the wall, but I can still have access to this outlet in here, which this is where I plug my bandsaw. I plug my bandsaw into that, and I keep my charger here for my drill and impact driver. And, I don't know, various tools and... Oops, I did that the wrong way. Here we go. So over here is mainly my drill bits and drivers, and under here I keep this whole set of drill bits and drivers. And I've got some extra space in there too. My random orbit sander is here with various grits of sandpaper. You can see that I'm running low on sandpaper, and I've got some up here that I haven't actually organized. Side note about sandpaper <laughs> i don't really have a good way of knowing when to throw out sandpaper when it's used up because a lot of times it feels like it's still working but i i just i have this real hard time bringing myself to throwing away a sheet of sandpaper so as a result i end up with all these sheets of sandpaper that are like half used or maybe maybe even more than half used and that's, if there was one problem area in my shop, it's sandpaper and knowing what to do with it. Anyways, let me get back to the tour. Um, this is a really cool plane that uh, a viewer sent me. He built that as part of the Maker's Care uh, fundraiser that we did a couple years ago. I thought that was really cool. Um, I don't have a good spot for my crosscut sled. So it just kind of sits here against the wall. And my planer, and I, I haven't used my planer in a long time. 
I think it needs to be adjusted a little bit because the blades on it are leaving kind of wavy marks in the wood. I'm not sure what all that's all about. Um, my compressor that kind of wanders around <laughs> when I use it is not the best compressor in the world, but it works. It's perfect for 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 driving nails. This is my my nail gun. A lot of people ask me about my nail gun, what brand it is, and I really don't know. I picked this up at I, Target or something a long long time ago. It came with My compressor my old compressor and then A viewer sent me this is a pin nailer, which is also really handy uh, I think a pin nailer and just a nail driver. Those are really Two of the most handiest tools I own uh, Oh moving over here I've got my drill press where I can access it. And this is one of the changes I made to the shop a few years ago is I put this workbench out here away from the wall. I don't know why I didn't do that sooner. I had these up against the wall. This way I can walk around, even though it's kind of messy, it's a little difficult to walk around there now. But I can walk around on this side and access my spindle sander, which I also love. Wow, a spindle sander makes sanding so much nicer on inside curves. Uh, my Craig jigs I keep over here, and I just I keep the screws right here because wherever I'm using it, if it's out on that outdoor workbench, I just screw it into wherever I need it, and then it won't won't move around. Uh, big chunk of wood. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that, but that's. Uh, that is one of those chunks of wood that is like, it's too good to use. And so it just sits there. It's, I think it's sat there for several years now because it's so nice. I just don't know what to do with it. Uh, move back around this side. This uh, drill press I've also had for a long time. This is a, an old Ryobi back before they were green. And it works, you know, I mean, it gets the job done. I like having a drill press. If you haven't seen how these work, they have two or like three spindles here and you adjust these belts on there. It actually has a diagram up here so you know what speed, what speed to set it on depending on what size bit you have it. I pretty much don't adjust those that very often. I just leave it set on kind of a medium fast speed. <laughs> Um, let's move around. Oh, these are, these are router bits in here. There's two little ones and then bigger ones down in there. This is also a problem that I need to deal with is that that's my router over there. Here's my router bits over here and that doesn't make any sense. So the idea Maybe I should just go, let me go over to the router table, talk about it for a minute, and then I'll come back to the or, organized tour. I built this router table a uh, long time ago, seven, eight years ago maybe. And the idea with it was I would make these drawers, you can see there, I'm not using them the way I was supposed to. These were going to have an insert here where I could just drop drill or router bits into so I would be able to access them. That's why they're that weird shape, but it just never panned out and I kind of, I regret doing that. I wish I had just built regular drawers in there rather than those. And there's the inside of my router table. In fact, that will bring me to one of the questions here. Let me get to a Patreon question. This one was from uh, let me see if I can find it here. Um, I can't find it. <laughs> no, this is this is making for some exciting video here. Uh, oh, here it is. It's from Jeffrey Leeby over on Patreon. Jeffrey wants to know: Are you still enjoying the router lift you build, and how is it holding up? So. Jeffrey, here is the router lift, and I love it. I think it's great. I didn't design this. This is one of the few projects I've made from plans, and this was from Shop Notes, which I don't know if that's still around or not, but 
it was a uh, it was a magazine, I guess, that would have just different plans and projects in it. And it was pretty easy to build. There's a little, some fussy parts on there, but what hap what, the way it works is this, the router sits in here and this is up here. And that's how I adjust it in this top drawer. I have all my little accessories in. This is really cool. This is a socket wrench. It's like a handheld thing. So it sits on there like that, and then I can raise that's how I raise and lower the router bit. Uh, I really like that lift a lot, and I wish I actually had plans for it to myself, because it's one of the projects that I get one of the videos I did that I get so many people who ask for plans for that and I don't have them. All I had was the original shop notes plans and I don't even think I have those anymore. So if you can find those old copies of shop notes, that's where it would be. The router table itself, I like, but it's actually another one of these things that's probably too big. I think I overbuilt it a little bit. I thought I would need more space this way and as it turns out almost everything that i almost all the profiles anything i cut on the router are much smaller and usually i don't need this extra space in the back at all this fence i really like and here's another thing i put in this t-track here i just have the cord sitting there this t-track that I don't think I've ever had a use for. So that was kind of, I don't know, live and learn, I guess. I thought it would be useful, but it's really not because I never really need to guide anything straight through there. I use this one sometimes. I'll clamp some feather boards in there to, to keep something running straight. Yeah, it's fairly, fairly useful sometimes. But that's the router table and the lift inside. I get back to my tour where I was here. This is one of my two, three, four workbenches. I, I kind of have a standard style of workbench that I make and just do modifications. This one I made with larger overhangs and it's got some drawers. Down here I have some exotic lumber that I can't bring myself to throwing away even though I'll probably never use this little piece of lace wood but I don't know at least it's in a small space so I <laughs> I won't accumulate too much of it I've got a few of my Craig uh, clamps over here they sent me and these are kind of specialty ones that fit into this vise here these little things here hook onto my pipe clamps and they just give them a little extra surface area. They just slide over the clamp, or slide over the pipe and just give me some extra space. Okay, let me try to catch up here. Um, drills, pretty much always just sitting around over here someplace. This is my combination discs. Hold on a second. I think I'm getting a bad connection warning. Let me scroll down a little bit, see if anybody... Sorry for the noise. Uh... Looks like I don't see any of you complaining too much about the quality. Okay, and I'm not getting the bad connection warning now, so I guess I guess we're okay to go. I'm not sure why it was doing that. Anyway, this is my combination disc sander and belt sander. I love this tool. Man, if you were gonna get one sander, I would recommend this one or something like it. This has got the eight inch sanding disc and one inch strip belt sander on there. And when I, when I first got this, really I just wanted the disc sander and I thought, well, okay, I guess it's got a, a strip sander on there. You know, I'll probably never use that. As it turns out, I use this thing all the time. I mean, it's great for 
sanding little things for shaping things if you use it down here you you have a back on it nice firm support but you can sand up here and it'll bend and you can you can shape wood on it plus i use it to sharpen tools uh, rough sharpening kind of like a grinding wheel up here i'll just run the tool on there so i really like that and it has dust collection ports that work really nice too so i can just hook up the shop back to that um, that's a great tool the only thing about it that's kind of a pain is these adhesive uh, discs are kind of hard to peel off and put back on so i tend to use them until there's hardly anything left just because i don't like to change them Another one of my workbenches, I think this was one of the first workbenches I built. This is the first workbench I built for my shop. It used to have it over here. And it was just kind of hobbled together with scrap wood and some used handles that I found somewhere. The And these are all just filled with junk. I'm not really good at organizing this sort of thing. This one was kind of an afterthought. A few years later, I put this drawer in here where I had a piece of oak and <laughs> used that for the drawer front. So nothing here really matches, which is okay. I know where everything is for the most part. Um, you can see over here, I've still got my test boards from when I was doing all the different weird staining techniques. And I'm really surprised how well these haven't faded. Look at this. This is Kool-Aid. And it's been sitting out here, right, you know, sunlight, everything for months now, and it still looks really good. So I'm going to be making another one of those videos sometime, too. I think that was a lot of fun, trying out different different things to stain with. Uh, I've pared down all of my handheld screwdrivers and things just to the ones that I only to the ones that I really need most often. I've got kind of a beater chisel here that's good for stuff other than, you know, real woodworking. I use it to just kind of chip away things. And uh, different types of screwdrivers. I like having this a small space, again, because it prevents me from expanding and over collecting tools. Um, mallet, I use the mallet all the time. Couple of hammers. And that's kind of the most of the tools. That's the most hand tools I use. I have a couple of saws up here I used last week. That one, my coping saw, and then I have a, a hack saw. And I don't know if any of you remember that cleaning boy needed sign. <laughs> it's from a really old video that Wyatt was in. He was the cleaning boy. It was a, like a black and white silent movie. Um, this... I like having, I don't have any sort of way of organizing it at all, and I'm fine with that. I just have, I know everything that I keep on here, I just don't have a spot for each individual thing. So whenever I, you know, pull out some screws and I use them, and I don't know where they, so I just put it back anywhere. It doesn't really matter to me as long as I can see everything on there. It only takes me a minute to look around and find where it is. And same goes for these. When I, when I first set up these little tool containers, this was my first one, really old one, and I thought, okay, I'll be really organized and I'll separate my wood screws and machine screws and over time that just doesn't work out and I just start throwing things in anywhere. Same with this one, but I've gotten really good at pulling two drawers out at a time like this. That's how I search for things that I need. And lots of screws. I, I don't separate them by size or style. They're just all thrown in there. But I can usually find a screw if I need a particular size. Uh, let's see. Again, my blank wall. I think I mentioned that last week. I kind of like having nothing there. At least for now. I may put something there eventually. Um, pieces of wood. I haven't done anything with right now. I don't really have a spot for them. This is a really handy project. I'm really happy that I built this roll around wood cart. And a lot of people have built this. I've got plans on my website, you know, if you're interested in doing that. That is super handy. And the reason why I like this is because it's 
it's only four feet wide. I didn't, I knew that I didn't want to store full eight foot long sheets of plywood. So I only use, you know, if I buy a full sheet of plywood, I'm going to cut it down and just use, you know, use it right then. I'm not going to buy plywood to store. So this is a great size to store things and it forces me to not overstock. Uh, a viewer to the show who lives here locally brought me over all of this plywood a while ago. It was really cool, and he, he's just the nicest guy. But this is this is eighth inch plywood. It's real thin, but it's it's beautiful. I don't know if it's I guess it's like Baltic birch, but it's sanded on both sides, and it's super handy for lots of different projects. And again, I just don't have a home for it yet. One of the one of my, let me flip this around. One of my problems is finding time to keep up with organizing my shop just because I'm so busy making projects, making videos and all the other stuff that goes on that I just kind of do quick run throughs, put things away and stuff like that that doesn't really have a place to be takes me a while to get to, to figure out <laughs> where am I going to store it. So right now it's kind of in the way all the time. Uh, clamps. I had a clamp question. Let me get to that one too. Uh, let me flip this around. I'm probably drive, making everybody dizzy with my, my camera work here. Uh, who was it asked a question? Uh, oh, Rick Blackburn. Rick, thanks for your question. He wanted to know, uh, do you have enough... Uh, he knows that the answer to the question, do you have enough clamps, is always no. But which clamps do you find yourself using the most? That's a good question because everybody always says that. You know, you can never have enough clamps. But I actually think you can have enough clamps because I, this is enough. I haven't really bought a new clamp in a long time. I like to have pipe clamps because they're super inexpensive. All you have to do is buy the jaws and then these black pipes are, are real cheap. But my most useful clamps, the ones I use, absolutely use the most, are bar clamps. Probably this one here, or the little shorter version, like this. Really handy. Probably, I'm starting to use these actually more than those, which are kind of the same thing. These are also bar clamps, but they've got this squeezable handle on there that makes them a lot easier to use. So if if I were to only own one style of clamp and these are more expensive, they, Craig sent me those. So I, I wouldn't, you know, I can't say go out and spend a lot of money on those. But if you want something inexpensive that you're going to use a lot, get these kind of bar clamps. I think these are, uh, I think they're Bessie clamps, but I've had them for a long time. You can see how the handles are all just worn and chewed out, but they still work really well. Again, my clamp organization, I don't really have, I don't keep them in specific spots. I just kind of plop them in wherever they seem to fit. C clamps, I picked these up at a garage sale a long, long time ago, and I like these. They kind of, once in a while, oh no, I can't get that out of there. Once in a while, these big, huge C-clamps come in handy. I don't use them a whole lot. And these are also handy. They don't have a lot of, these kind of spring clamps don't have a lot of holding power. And it's kind of hard for gl using to glue things up because as soon as you put them on, the two pieces of wood just tend to they go and slide apart. Uh, this is another useful clamp. This is my strap clamp for picture frames and this is pallet wood project right there uh, once in a while people ask me about my logo on here that I spray painted and I don't know and th these purple pieces here and that actually goes back a ways to last year when I built these new clamp racks and I took the old ones off the wall and so they left these big white or these big empty patches where it wasn't painted white and a lot of people were commenting that it was just bugging them that I had those empty 
patches on the wall and would I please paint them? So I painted them. I just didn't paint them white. <laughs> and then at the same time, I, I decided to just put some graffiti on my wall with some spray paint. This is a little roll around cabinet I built a while back. This is really useful. My miter saw, I find myself using my miter saw less and less. Um, I'm not sure why really. I guess just because the table saw can kind of do the same thing. Even though the miter saw is a little handier to use. I think I would use it more if I had it hooked up to a better, in a better spot. Right now, to use this, I really need to move it outside. Otherwise, the sawdust just goes everywhere. It's just a mess. So that's why it's on the roll around cabinet. So I can just roll it out to the driveway. And then again, I hook up the shop vac to that. Um, TV I'm going to be getting rid of. I just don't use it any longer. I used to use it occasionally for maybe watching football games or listening to Sirius XM. I rarely do that anymore. So I think I'm going to get rid of it, free up some of this wall space. I'll probably just give that away. If you live near me and if you want a TV, come over and, and grab it. This is a really cool sign. I don't, I don't know if a lot of you know Lainey Shaughnessy. I'm getting a reflection on there. Let's see if I can get that. Lainey Shaughnessy made this for me uh, a long time ago. I liked that because he was one of the first people that would watch my show and this was a uh, scroll saw project that he made. And I kind of I kind of miss Lainey. He used to be on YouTube all the time, but I think he's really busy now working trade show circuits with uh, a tool tool manufacturer of some sort. Here's where I keep my uh, handheld power tools. That's kind of a mess. I've got my belt sander. I recently bought that. Jigsaw. Here's a hot air gun. Circular saw. This little sander that I also got recently. This doesn't really belong here. That's a trimmer for the yard which won't hold a charge anymore so I should probably get rid of that. This is a uh, what do you call the the uh, reciprocating saw like a sawzall and up on top I've got another circular saw on up there doesn't work as well as this one that's why I bought this one I was having a hard time getting a straight cut with that so I'm probably gonna give that one away too. Biscuit jointer which I use about once a year, maybe not even that. So that one's that one's on my short list of tools that I may, may be getting rid of. Uh, this I built this with the intention of using it for table saw accessories, and I've got like my dado stack here and a couple of other push sticks and, and things. This turned out to be a pretty good idea. I put these. I have a crosscut sled and a miter sled, and they're just hanging from chains up there, and so that's kind of a good way to keep that out of the way. Of course, you guys have seen my scroll saw and my lathe. These are uh, tools that were my dad's. He bought those back in the 1950s, and they're... I don't know. I wish I, better ones would be nice. These are really old, especially the, the jigsaw is kind of clunky to use. It makes a lot of noise. And if you can put a shop sink in a shop, this thing is real handy to have just for washing out finishes and brushes and even just washing my hands and just keeping it, keeping everything nice and tidy. I like having the sink. I keep my finishes in this cabinet, or some of my finishes. Um, and I love that smell when I open that up. I don't know what it is about that. Uh, spray paint. And then the rest of my finishes are down in this cabinet. This pull rolls out. It's really a mess and a disaster right now. This rolls out, and I've got a door on this side and a door on the opposite side, which in retrospect is not very practical because nine times out of ten the thing I need to get is on that back side so I got to roll that out and that wouldn't be a problem if 
I wasn't so messy on the top because now when I roll it out, I got to make sure things aren't going to be falling off and then I've got to move this junk out of the way. Um, let's see. That's kind of a go. Oh, I know what I'll show you is this part here. I don't know if some of you might not have seen this. I have this loft area up above my garage door where I keep long boards and uh, just other things that are just too long to keep anywhere else. I'm trying to keep less. I used to have a lot more stuff up there, but I noticed that it was all, this is bowing down. So I don't think it's meant to support that kind of weight. So that's what I do. I also have these cabinets here that are the back side of the cabinets inside my office. And they're so high up there, it's, it's not really practical for anything, but I store some things up there that I hardly ever need. Uh, I'm not even sure what's up in there right now because I have to have a ladder to get to those, to get to those things. But that's my loft up there. And of course the table saw, I, I like having, I love having the mobile table saw because then I can move it out of the way and then I've got access to my workbench and and I just like to work outside on it. I, if I ever get a new table saw, I'm going to keep with kind of this size rather than get a huge table saw just for that reason. I like I like it being mobile. I just got this last week. I was helping Wyatt out with a uh, photography project and helping him cut out a whole bunch of photographs. Uh, and of course, this is my main workbench that you've you've all seen. And there we go. There's the whole shop. I'll do a quick panorama here. Let you take a look at it all again. And then I'll get to your questions. And that's the shop. And I've got a lot of lights in the shop too. Lights, lights, lights. Lights. <laughs> lights. Lights everywhere. Lights are good for woodworking. And they're good for shooting video too. Okay, I'm going to flip this around. Hello again. <laughs> okay. Set that on there. I hope that, I hope that wasn't jarring you around too much during that. I want to get to some of the questions that, uh, I want to get to all of the questions that people over on Patreon uh, wanted to know. And first I'm going to do a quick check here and see if there was anything else that came in. Uh, I got a super chat from Corils. Uh, thank you, Corils. He says, I don't have a question. I just want to thank you. Well, thank you for watching and thank you for the, for the donation to the show. It really it helps out a lot. And I, I just appreciate everybody, everybody watching this show. Okay, let me let me bang out some of these questions here. Uh, first of all, there was two questions. One from Jeffrey Lieby. Oh no, I answered Jeffrey's question. That was about the router lift, but thanks for asking it again. Uh, okay, Ken Ken Weinert. Uh, do you have any tools that you don't really use or regret purchasing? And then. Kevin Dogian asked a similar question. Have you ever bought a tool expecting it to be the greatest addition to your shop only for it to end up leaving you with a handful of disappointment? <laughs> if so, which tool and why and do you still have it? Thank you, Ken and Kevin for those questions. Yeah, of course. I think we've all made those dumb tool purchases that we thought were so cool. And the one that always comes to mind for me is a dovetail jig. I bought a uh, dovetail jig because I thought that if, if you're going to be a woodworker, you, you better make some dovetails. And so I got it. And you, it's one of those that you run your router through, you know, and it, it, it's hard to use. It's complicated. And <clears throat> I probably used it three or four times. And every time I used it, I had to relearn it all because I'd forgotten. It had been so long since I'd used it. So I had to get out the, the manual, which was a thick manual and read it, how to set it up. And I thought, 
If I want to make dovetails, I'm pretty sure it would be cheaper for me to take the time to actually learn how to just cut them by hand rather than to fool with fool with that tool. So I kept it around for a while. It did a good job. It took a lot of testing whenever you wanted to make dovetails on it to get them to fit right. But when you got it, it, it worked out great. But I just it, I just never used that thing. So I, I can't remember if I sold it or, or gave it away. I think I might have given it to... Stan, who also lives here locally. I'm not sure if I gave it to him or not, but I, that's that's what happened. And the other tool <clears throat> that I bought that I didn't use, but I don't regret buying it because it's a good tool, is a jointer. Someday I may get another jointer. I don't know. I'm, I got it for $100. It was a big one, and uh, I thought I would use it a lot, and I didn't use it a lot because, and I mentioned this, I think in last week's show, most of what I use is dimensional lumber lumber that I could get at the lumber yard that's pre-cut you know three-quarter inch lumber like like you get at Home Depot and so I don't really have a need to joint that much especially for the projects I build I don't demand that level of precision so it, it sat there for a long time and I only occasionally used it and then it's just I got to the point where I thought I can use this space better without this here I can put something else in that space so I got rid of that, but I don't, I can't say that it was a, a regret. I don't regret having that. I just didn't fit with the style of woodworking I was doing. Um, then it seems like there was one other. Oh, I know what it was. It was that biscuit jointer. Remember I said I'm putting that on the short list. <laughs> I got a biscuit jointer because I used to watch Norm Abram on New Yankee Workshop. And for a while there, he was like really into biscuit joints. And eventually, as I, I was using them, and as, as I started to learn more about woodworking and read more and look at some tests, I found out that biscuit joints don't really do a whole lot, or at least they don't add much strength. They help keep edges of boards aligned if you're going to edge joint them or join them together. <clears throat> but I don't think it's that useful of a tool. So I, I may be getting rid of that. You know who made a cool project with a, with a biscuit joiner is Steve Carmichael. I'm, a lot of you probably know Steve Carmichael. And he, uh, he made a, a project, I think it was a lamp maybe, where he just, just cut a whole bunch of holes in it with a biscuit jointer. And now that I'm thinking about it, it might not have been a biscuit jointer. It might have been a pocket hole. I think it was pocket holes he did, so I don't remember. But that was really cool because it was just emphasizing the thing that everybody says you're not supposed to emphasize. I like that. Uh, let's see, let's move on to, let's see, I got Jeffrey, I got Rick, Ken, uh, oh, another Rick, Rick Miller. Uh, what tool do you currently own would you really like to upgrade to something newer with better features? Yeah, actually I actually have two tools that I would like to upgrade. One, my bandsaw. And it's not that it needs an upgrade as much as it's just worn out. And I've used it so long that it's, it's hard to keep it tracking straight. It's excessively hard to change the blades on it. So I kind of use the same blade all the time. And it's, I just know that pretty soon it's just going to, it's just going to die on me. And that's kind of a big purchase, a bandsaw. So I, I, I want to get one like that 14 inch or bigger. I don't see much use on those little 12 inch table, tabletop ones. Uh, just because a lot of what I want to do on a bandsaw is resawing, making boards thinner by, you know, running them on the edge. The other tool I would really like to upgrade is that scroll saw that I mentioned earlier, that old antique scroll saw. And because it's kind of fun doing scroll saw work and the newer ones within the past 60 years have improved. I mean, they're smoother, they have an easier way of changing the blades. And so that may be something along the horizon. And scroll saws aren't that expensive too, so. One of these days, I may get me a new scroll saw. Thanks for that question, Rick. Uh, Tom Kelly wants to know if Wyatt's home for the summer, will we do any more Mimo makes? He liked those. Uh, thanks, Tom. That's cool. I'm glad you liked that series. That was over, I think we did those over on Mirror Mitt, or on 
Yeah, on the other channel, Mere Minutes. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. We should do some more of those. I'd like to do some more videos with Wyatt. That would be fun. If we get some time this summer, uh, maybe we'll do those. And Mimo Makes was where we would show projects that other people have made and posted on the website, and we would discuss them. Um, let's see. Uh, Robert Hughes. Robert Hughes says... Uh, doesn't really have a question. He says, I'm glad, I'm, I'm so glad to see a shop without those expensive fest tools. Glad to have a representative for the everyday man. <laughs> well, that's woodworking for mere mortals. That's the whole point of the show. And did you know it? There's a call coming again. I get to reject that. I did learn this time. I turned off all the notification sounds on my phone. Uh, anyways, as, as far as the Festool and everything, if Festool, I mean, I'm sure they make great tools and everybody who uses them loves them. But I also think that it's, it's important for me. Remember, I'm, I don't do woodworking for a living. I make videos for a living. And so all of my projects and everything I do, I do with, the intention of my audience and what they're expecting to see and keeping it for mere mortals as much as I can. And so, you know, those expensive tools don't really fit within that format. And plus I have a perfectly fine time working with inexpensive tools. I'm convinced that most of us can do really nice work with very inexpensive tools. Uh -huh. If you're going to be doing some really fine woodworking, then you probably want to do, spend the money on those really expensive tools. But in my case, I don't see the point of, and again, I'm not really a tool guy. So I just kind of use, I just use whatever is affordable and seems to work well and make it work. I mean, I worked on that old table saw for a long time, many years, and it was just a little like 12 inch craftsman table saw. You know, I made perfectly fine projects with it. You just need a blade that spins, you know, the most important thing on inexpensive tools. And I think where they cut back on their cost is on the fence, the getting a good rip fence is sometimes a challenge on the on the cheaper tools just to keep it aligned right but even that you can tweak it and make sure that it, it get it to work right uh, but thanks for the thanks for the comment robert i appreciate that uh paul chester wants to know have you ever considered buying a cnc engraver router <laughs> Think of all the extra fancy that would bring. And I don't think Princess Meow Meow gets enough woodworking for mere mortals airtime. I agree. I think she needs to be on the show more. All she does is just, she just sits around and sleeps most of the day. <laughs> She's not, Princess Meow Meow is like 13 years old. So she, she doesn't move around a whole lot anymore. Uh, let's see, getting back to your other question, the CNC, yeah, uh, again, all of those, it's kind of, it's just that it doesn't fit within the format of my show. Uh, if I were doing woodworking projects, making things for a living, a CNC is a great, uh, great thing to have because it would just speed up the work enormously for a lot of cutting a lot of parts. And same with a laser cutter, you know, I mean, if, and I think though, uh, I was thinking when I saw laser cutters for the first time, I was kind of like playing around with them. And I thought, this is really cool because it's, you could make little bitty like keychains, all kinds of things with those. And I was just thinking of like San Francisco, I could go to the Golden Gate Bridge where people set up and sell things there. And you could make a mint off of those. I mean, people are selling little keychains like that for $20 made on a laser cutter. And you put a piece of wood in there and let it do the work and it, it's just like printing money, but I don't have time to do that sort of thing. And again, I just, I just don't do that sort of thing, but bugs flying around, but I do think that there's a, a shift. And for a while it was like l l affordable, low end woodworking was 
was really popular and pallet projects were popular and trying to save money and I do kind of sense a shift and especially on a lot of uh, uh, YouTube channels they start to as, as you start to grow you get a lot of offers from companies that want to send you these expensive tools and I've had the same offers for the CNC laser and all that stuff and yeah I think it would be fun to have but it's it's not what I do and I, I just think that there needs to be a resource that creates projects that everybody can make without having to do that and those are expensive those are really expensive tools and it just seems like to me it gets frustrating to watch channels that are just do so much of that work and not because not because that work isn't difficult to do I mean the, the cutting is easy but you got to design it and you just, it's just not it's not visually interesting to watch that and so I think a lot of that is a shift in the way people are thinking and the way people want to watch videos to just kind of watch something being made rather than watching things to think how you can apply that to yourself and I, I think I'm getting into a little bit of a rambling ramp territory there because I don't I don't want to be that guy who says oh, I hate CNC and I hate lasers because I don't it's just not what I want to focus on I just want to make sure that my channel kind of keeps it keeping it real I guess um let's see Troy Peterson wants to let me get let me get back to you Troy because I'm gonna take the camera out on well, your question Tom Kelly wants to know have you ever had a chance to use a table saw molding head cutter they seem pretty useful I haven't and I don't do I don't cut a whole lot of molding those things do look pretty cool but you know you can do you can cut cove molding curved moldings and coves into wood on a table saw just by running the wood if your blade is here you run the wood through at an angle that way and it's a little scary to do and if you haven't done it before you got to really do your research on it because it can be dangerous to do you got to make sure that wood is in there properly and that you have everything under control but you can do cove moldings on a table saw which I have done yeah. okay so now let's get to Troy uh, Troy Peterson okay since you have your whole garage dedicated to your shop, where do you keep everything that normally gets stored in the garage, such as bikes, camping gear, garden tools, spare chairs, jars of canned goods, paper supplies from Costco, etc.? <laughs> Mostly, we don't stock up on things. We try to avoid it. We have a small house. So over the years, we've learned to... I mean, we stock up on some things. We've got a pantry inside where we store things some canned goods I made a canned good dispenser I still use that thing that we can store certain canned goods that we use a lot of and as far as the rest of the stuff we don't go camping I don't like camping at all so I don't have any camping gear and let's see garden tools we don't have any bikes garden tools though and those kind of things I'll show you where they are because they're out in my shed and I can show you a little bit about my shed and the problems I have with that. Okay, we're gonna flip this back around. Mm -hmm. So, this is my garden shed out here. I built these doors for it a few years ago and they have warped like crazy. And this is because I bought really wet wood from Home Depot and then it dried on here. So these, are going to have to be replaced and that's a shame because they spent a lot of time working on those things so this is our garden shed and it's kind of a disaster there's my lawnmower i keep pressure washer on top of it my goal last summer was to organize this and put shelves in here i never got to it i hope to do that this summer i've got all paint in here and a little ladder this is where i keep the tardis is still sitting in here and I haven't done anything with it ever since I built it so that's where we keep all of that gardening stuff we do have a few lawn chairs back in there there's a bird feeder I made a while back I took it down and 
we got the house painted and I haven't put it back up yet. That's what we do with this stuff. And this, by the way, this area here, if I had often thought if I was going to put in a dust extraction unit, it this would be perfect back here because I could just cut a hole right through the wall and feed that duct right into my shop and then it would be quiet. So let me shut these back again. So that's my that's my messy shed and that's what we that's what we do with all that kind of junk. But for the most part the key is don't save a bunch of junk like that and I don't know. We've just been we've gotten pretty good at not not hoarding things. Uh so yeah, I think that was the last question from Patreon. Um I think so. So thank you, Kevin, Tom, Troy, Paul, Robert, Tom, Rick, Ken, Rick again, and Jeffrey. Thanks a lot for those questions. If you guys want to ask questions, I'm going to do these kind of Q&As every month uh, with questions from Patreon. And if you would like to get your question answered about anything, we will um, post it over there on Patreon. Next month, we're going to do not the shop tour something else i've forgotten what it was <laughs> i had something kind of cool in mind and i thought oh, that'd be a good, a good idea hold on a second i'm gonna check my calendar uh, real quick um and i don't remember what it was I'll let you guys know. Make sure you guys follow me over on Instagram and Twitter. And I'll keep up, keep you up to date with what we're going to be doing on the live shows. <sighs> I think I made it through a lot of them. Did I miss any, uh, any more of the super chats? I think I got them all. Huh. <sighs> Kind of out of breath now. I feel like just just talk, 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 talk. And I don't think that, I think I covered everything, everything in this shop. I hope you enjoyed the shop tour. Let me know if you guys have any suggestions on, you know, what do you guys do to improve your shop? What's the biggest problem you have with the shop? Is it storage? Is it storage for the tools? Is it just keeping things organized? I think that that's a big problem for me. I, I find that it's, I try to put things away as I'm using them. That helps out a lot. And actually for me, just shooting video helps out a lot because I can, I need to keep it kind of, so it's not so messy and so much of a distraction. It was funny because Nick Ferry came out here last month and we were talking about that and how shooting our videos, a lot of times it's all about Oh my God, there's all this junk in the background. And so all we do is just like move it all to someplace else. So you think, oh, that's a pretty, pretty organized shop. But really all the junk is like right over here on this side of the camera. <laughs> uh, really enjoy doing these live streams with you guys. I hope you enjoy them. I will have a new project video next week on Friday. And I'll be doing a live stream after that project video. I think it's going to be a basics video this week. I haven't quite decided. I might do a uh, basic video on either the router or on just different saw cuts. I thought that would be interesting. Different types of saw cuts, whether, you know, you got your resaw, cross cut, you know, all the different kinds of cuts you can make on a saw. And that's all I got. Thank you all for joining me and I will see you next Friday.